ponytails. Red, I scribbler. Too Far by Night Mysterio Stupid every storms, Diamond Tiara muttered, the pink filly glaring up at the dark, stormy sky as they walked to school. Blasted things make everything dreary. At least it's not raining yet. She shook her head and looked to the grey filly walking beside her for support, only to find that she had a pensive expression on her face. Silver Spoon adjusted her glasses nervously, looking away from Diamond Tiara. Diamond Tiara scowled and said, What's up with you today? Silver Spoon shook her head. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's nothing. <laughs> oh. Diamond Tiara shook her head. Sylvie, I know you. I know when something's wrong with you. Now come on, tell me. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't try to make things right for my best buddy? She said her expression softening a little. Silver Spoon smiled a little. I think you overdid it with Dinky yesterday, she said hesitantly. Diamond Tiara groaned, her head drooping. Ah, uh, this again? Silver Spoon grimaced. Yeah, but were all the things you said about her mom necessary? And... And you really laid it on thick with calling her a burden to her... Gee, Sylvie, Diamond Tiara said, rolling her eyes. It was just some harmless teasing. But, but, she ran off crying, Tiara. You've been going after her pretty hard the past few weeks. Ever since the end of the Equestria Games, it's like, like you hate her or something. Well, nothing's working with Blank Frank who satyrs anymore, Diamond Tiara said, shaking her head. I gotta have some fun, don't I? It's not my fault she's a crybaby. Plus, picking on that little baby is surprisingly relaxing. Silver Spoon continued to shake her head. Diamond Tiara scowled. What is with you lately, Sylvie? She demanded. It's just... Well, with the Crusaders, it's always been a challenge. With Dinky, it, it feels kind of like... Like kicking a puppy? Diamond Tiara rolled her eyes. Oh, whatever. Come on. Let's go. There's supposed to be an actually cool guest speaker today. Silver Spoon frowned, but nodded. She and Diamond Tiara headed to school. Once they got to class, they sat down near the front, chatting amiably, though Silver Spoon's worried expression never fully went away. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon gave the Crusaders their usual insults when they arrived. The three fillies ignored them all as they went to sit in the back, poring over an elaborate construction plan of apple blooms. Cheerily entered. The class put away what they were playing with and greeted her politely. She looked around, taking a quick visual headcount. When she noticed an empty seat, she frowned. Cheerily stared suspiciously at Diamond Tiara for a long moment. The pink filly glared back at her, wondering what her problem was. After a moment, Cheerily just shook her head. Well, we'll give her some extra time to get here. She might just be late. In the meantime, class, we've got some special guests for you today. She went over to the window, opening it and calling out, We're ready for you. Come on down. Diamond Tiara briefly noticed Scootaloo wearing the world's biggest smile, her underdeveloped wings buzzing so much that she was starting to hover out of her desk. She understood why a moment later, as three wonderbolts flew in through the open window. They were accompanied by Rainbow Dash, who had made the reserves a few months back. Spitfire, Soarin' and Fleetfoot landed near Cheerilee's desk. Rainbow Dash doing a tight loop-de-loop -loop in the classroom before landing right alongside them. Hey kids, how's it going? Sorin said, grinning cheerfully. Yay! The class cheered, especially the Pegasus students. Cheerily grinned. So awesome! 
Scootaloo cheered, leaping out of her seat. Rainbow Dash chuckled, Spitfire nudging her playfully. Cheerily managed to calm the excited students down, the Wonderbolts all sitting down. Spitfire opened her mouth to speak, but before she could, <laughs> derpy hooves burst through the schoolhouse door. The wall-eyed Pegasus was in tears. Behind her was Sparkler, her eldest daughter. The amethyst unicorn wore a worried expression. I'm sorry, Derpy panted. But I can't find my youngest daughter, Dinky. I've been looking for her all morning, and I was hoping she'd be here, but... She spotted the empty seat and broke up into sobs. Silver Spoon cast a worried glance at Diamond Tiara, who just scowled, angry that the visit had been interrupted. Cheerily stepped forward. Miss Hooves, Derpy, Derpy, it's okay. We'll find her. I'm sure the Wonderbolts will be more than willing to help with the search. Sure thing, Spitfire said. Even if it wasn't part of our job, we'd be more than willing to help find a missing foal, right? You bet, Rainbow Dash said, nodding firmly. We're in, boss lady, Fleetfoot said, flapping her wings for emphasis. No problem, Soren said, smiling confidently. Do you have anything that would help us find her? Any clue? The teacher asked. We found this taped to Dinky's bedroom door. Sparkler said, a worried expression on her face. She stepped forward, levitating a note. Cheerily and the Wonderbolts all leaned in to read it. Expressions of horror coming over their faces. Full grid search. Spitfire said, her face darkening. Scan the entire town and the surrounding area. Focus on trees, cliffs, roofs, high places in general, plus any place she could have fallen. Gorges, ravines, whatever. Fleetfoot, that zebra that lives in the Everfree, was in town earlier today. See if she's still there and try to convince her to set up a search party in that heinous place. Sigora's cool. She'd be more than happy to help. Rainbow Dash assured. All right, Spitfire said, nodding. Let's do this. Derpy, you're with us. Wonderbolts to the skies. The Wonderbolts zipped out of the classroom, Derpy following them. Cheerily cast an impenetrable look at Diamond Tiara, who just gave her a confused one right back. The school teacher shook her head, biting her lip. Classes are cancelled for the rest of the day. Silver Spoon hesitantly came forward. Can, can I see the note? Sparkler glared at her. Silver Spoon flinched, her ears down in fright. After a moment, though. Sparkler nodded and gave Silver Spoon the note. She read it aloud. Dear Mommy, I'm really sorry for what I'm about to do, but I just can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. I'm scared to go to school because of her. I went to the teacher like I'm supposed to, but no matter what Miss Cheerilee tries, her father always gets out of trouble in some way. I have to get away from her. I thought about running away, but the worst part about it all is that she's right. She told me that I'm a burden to you, that I'm a burden to everyone. Where would I go if I ran away? I'd just be a burden someplace else too. I've seen the hospital bills from my accident last year. I've seen you late at night when you think I'm in bed, working at a calculator, looking all sad and worried. I know you're trying to figure out how to pay for everything. I hate that you make you sad, Mommy. I never want to make you sad, but just being around makes you cry after you put me to bed. It's why I never told you about what Diamond Tiara was doing to me. I didn't want you to worry and be even more sad. At least by doing this, I can get rid of your burden. You won't be sad anymore, and neither will I. I love you always, Mommy. I hope that I will see you again one day. Love, Dinky. By the time she was finished, nearly every student in the classroom had a look of horror on their faces. I told you! I told you that you were doing it! Silver Spoon shrieked. That's enough of that, Silver Spoon. Cheerily took the note back. Yelling at each other isn't helpful right now. What would be is helping to find her before. She trailed off. Then she and Sparkler stormed out of the classroom. Silver Spoon ran after them. Wait, please! I I'm gonna help! Look! Diamond Tiara frowned. I don't get it. What's the big deal? You, you really don't understand? Sweetie Belle asked, 
shaking her head incredulously. Applebloom snarled, "Forget her. She wouldn't know she'd done something wrong if some found a potato. Now come on, let's go help find Dinky." Applebloom led the Crusaders out the door. The other students filed out of the classroom, leaving a confused and angry Diamond Tiara behind. "Jeez," Diamond Tiara said after everyone else was gone. Is that little crybaby blank blank really gonna overreact so much just because she couldn't take a dumb joke or two? She shook her head and went outside, mad at Silver Spoon for abandoning her. Maybe some ice cream would cheer her up. Once outside, Diamond Tiara looked up, seeing the four Wonder Bolts zipping back and forth, scanning for any sign of the young unicorn. Several other Pegasi, including Fluttershy, Blossomforth, and Thunderlane, had also been drafted into the search. As she headed into town, Diamond Tiara saw Zakora briefing several ponies on the dangers of the Everfree, clearly preparing to lead a search party into the forest. All this time wasted on one little blank blank. Diamond Tiara muttered, heading for the ice cream shop. Before she could get there, however, she heard Fleetfoot call out, "I see her!" She's over by Gasly Gorge. She, oh no, crap! She jumped. She jumped. Thank you. Derpy wailed. The Wonderbolts and the other Pegasi all streaked off in the direction of the gorge. Rainbow Dash rapidly pulling ahead of the pack. Various other ponies gathered around, staring worriedly in the direction the Pegasi had gone. Diamond Tiara, curiosity overcoming her desire for ice cream, gathered with them. Derpy. Too distraught to fly properly, landed nearby. Tears streaming down her face as Sparkler galloped up to hug her tightly. After far too long, the Pegasi who had flown off came back. To every pony's horror, cradled gently in Rainbow Dash's forelegs, was a limp, blood-stained form. The other Wonderbolts flanked her, looking somber. I'm sorry. I. I wasn't fast enough," Rainbow Dash said, tears in her eyes as she gently gave Dinky to Derpy. No, no, no! Please, please, Celestia, no! Derpy wailed, hugging Dinky's limp little body, tears streaming down her face. Dinky, Sparkler said softly. Dinky, no, no, it can't be. Spitfire shook her head. By the time we caught up with her. She was. She'd hit several of the outcroppings on the way down. I'm so sorry, Rainbow Dash said, her voice choked with despair. I couldn't get her in time. Derpy and Sparkler held each other tightly, sobbing into each other as they hugged the lifeless young filly. Thunder rumbled as rain began to pour down. Reacting to the combined grief and magic of so many Pegasi, Diamond Tiara frowned, shrugged, and prepared to leave. She was stopped, however, when her father came through the crowd, a disturbed look on his face. What happened here? Filthy Rich asked, stepping towards Zerpy. Is that, by all that's holy, is that little Dinky who? You! Zerpy shrieked, unfamiliar hatred on her face. You. You stay away from us. The older Earth Pony backed away as if struck. This is all your fault. I never want to speak to you again. I, I never ever want to see you again. Derpy, I. Filthy Rich stammered, looking distressed. Diamond Tiara, indignant, started to step forward, planning to yell at Derpy for daring to insult her father. Before she could, however. Cheerily stepped between him and Derpy, leaning up into Filthy Rich's face, her own a mask of rage, grief, and regret. She's right. This is your fault, you stupid, stupid stallion. I begged you, pleaded with you, tried to reason with you. I've done everything I could to try to get you to see sense and rein in your daughter. I tried to make you see what spoiling and indulging her was doing to her. But would you listen? No, you prefer to ignore the problem. At least until I went over your head. Every time I or Mare Mare tried to get a school board official involved, you just bribe or blackmail them into leaving her alone. And now look what's happened. Dinky killed herself because of what your little monster did to her. The little monster you created. 
cheerily forced the damp suicide note into Filthy Rich's grasp. The business pony looked it over with growing horror. Diamond, he said softly. Did you really say these things? Diamond Tiara looked around at the ponies, either glaring at her or looking sympathetically at Derpy and Sparkler. Fluttershy was gently leading them away. Zakora had wrapped her cloak around Dinky, and a unicorn nurse gently levitated the body beside them. Diamond Tiara frowned, trying to think of something clever to say. In the end, she just sighed and decided to be honest. It's not my fault that she couldn't take a little teasing. It was one of the worst things she could have said. Cheerily snarled angrily. The other gathered ponies threw her looks of disgust. She barely paid any attention to them. Her attention focused on her father, who was staring at her, as if seeing her for the very first time. It was unsettling. Daddy? Diamond Tiara shuffled uncomfortably. Please stop looking at me like that. You're not stopping me this time, Cheerily said. I'm taking this directly to the princess if I have to. Consider it taken to them, said another voice. Filthy Rich, Cheery Lee, and Diamond Tiara turned to see the young dragon Spike riding towards them on Rarity's back. Twilight Luna and Celestia are in conference in Canteron, but they'll come for this. I just need a quill and a scroll. Rarity nodded. I have both at my shop, she said, the fashion designer casting a glare at Diamond Tiara before turning and leaving with Spike. Cheery Lee grunted in satisfaction, following them. Slowly, other ponies began to file away, Filthy Rich sitting down, suddenly feeling nauseous. As the other ponies began filing away, an elderly green earth pony hobbled up to Filthy Rich, her expression unreadable. Filthy Rich smiled nervously. Hello, Granny Smith. The elderly man nodded. Filthy, I just had a thought just now. I don't think Sweet Apple like is just gonna want to do business with Barnyard Bargains anymore. In fact, if I think about it, pretty much the entire Apple family is going to stop selling our products through your stores. Filthy Rich winced. Of course. I'll issue a global recall of all Apple family products immediately. He said, nodding, ignoring the stunned look Diamond Tiara gave him. Thank you kindly. Take nothing personal against you, Filthy. It's just with all that's happened, we got to think of the family's reputation. I understand completely. Good day, ma'am. Good day to you, Filthy. You best get inside. Every storms tend to last a good long beard, Granny Smith said, turning and hobbling away. Filthy Rich watched her go, frowning. Diamond Tiara shook her head, outraged. Daddy, are you really going to let that rube cheat you like that? Diamond, please, just shut up for once, Filthy Rich said. Diamond Tiara, stunned, stared up at her father. Come on, let's go home. She's right, these ever-free storms take forever to dissipate. Wordlessly, the two of them went back to Filthy Rich's carriage, the driver having put on a raincoat. They drove back to the rich estate in silence, Diamond Tiara snuggling up to her father, but unable to get him to look at her. They went inside, a unicorn butler waiting at the front door with towels for both Diamond Tiara and Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich dismissed the butler, telling him to take the rest of the day off and to have the rest of the servants take the day off as well. Once he was gone, he put his face in his hooves and sighed. Okay, damage control, damage control. Just think of the business angles and you won't dwell on the personal ones you've just lost. The business pony got up and headed for his office, a nervous diamond tiara following behind him. Daddy, Daddy, what do you mean? What personal angles? Filthy Rich stopped, sighing. Sweetheart, there's something you should... Something I... I should have told you before, but I was worried about how you'd react. He paused. Derpy and I have been dating for the past few weeks. I have feelings for her. 
In fact, before this, I, I think I had fallen in love with her and, and she with me. I was going to ask her to marry me. Diamond Tiara gagged. You were going to marry that retard? Filthy Rich stared at her, aghast and suddenly more furious than she had ever seen him. Diamond Tiara flinched. Abruptly, he turned away, scrubbing at his face with his forehooves. After a long moment, he turned back and hugged her tightly, tighter even than Derpy had hugged Dinky's tiny broken body. Oh, Diamond, I've done so wrong by you, he said in a choked voice. Diamond Tiara felt fear building up in her heart at this confusing statement. Filthy Rich looked her right in the eyes. Diamond Tiara grimaced at the disappointment and sadness she saw in them, all trace of anger gone. I never should have stopped you from being punished. I should have been willing to discipline you, but but after your mother died bringing you to me, I became so focused on just making sure you were happy and loved that I... I didn't. He shook his head. They're right. It is my fault Dinky killed herself, just as much as it is yours. Diamond Tiara was starting to get scared. Why was her daddy talking like this? I... I don't understand. And I will forever hate myself, because I never taught you that understanding. He released her and continued on to his office, Diamond Tiara following behind. We're probably going to have to move, too, he said, more to himself than to her. What? Why? Diamond, you bullied a filly into killing herself. That's not something any pony can sweep under the rug. Plus, you have a reputation for being a bully, too. I've deflected the efforts of Charlie, Applejack, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Mayor Mare, every pony who has ever come to me about you. And now, because of that, a filly has died. We've lost a lot of face and a lot of respect in this town. I've lost... lost my chance with... He shook off the thickness in his voice. In addition to that... We're also going to take a hit in profits as well. What? Just because that Rube family pulled their stuff out of the store? Surely the goodness that won't affect things that much. Diamond Tiara said, incredulous. Filthy Rich gave her a pained look. Diamond, that Rube family has a near equestria-wide monopoly on fruit production. The only places they don't have control of are places that don't have members of the Apple family living there. And on top of that, if competition does arise in a place with apples living there, they don't drive them out of business. They charm them into joining the family. We're looking at a 7% loss in profits across every single one of my stores at least. Diamond Tiara sat down, stunned. She thought of Apple Bloom's faded and patched main ribbon. But they're always so poor. Because most of the money they make selling in my stores and at their stand in town has to go to maintaining their farmlands. They own more land than we do, Diamond. Filthy Rich said, sighing. Diamond Tiara's mind was in chaos. This was all too much to process. And the apples will be just the first to pull out. Filthy Rich was back talking as if to himself. Diamond Tiara stared up at him, shocked. Filthy Rich nodded. You bullied someone to death. Because of that, our store's reputation is going to take a hit. Locally, at least, we have deals with several farmers. After what's happened, most of all of them are likely to pull out in order to avoid being associated with us. Diamond Tiara collapsed, all the strength going out of her legs. I... what? This can't be real! Why... The things we do have consequences, Diamond. Filthy Rich said opening his office door. It's time we both started facing them. Indeed, said a voice from inside his office. Both Filthy Rich and Diamond Tiara jumped at the sound. Princess Celestia and Princess Luna, both with stern looks on their faces, were waiting inside. Princess Celestia sipped at a cup of tea. Filthy Rich and Diamond Tiara both bowed, neither princess stopping them from doing so. Filthy Rich... We have received the word of thy daughter's heinous actions. We wish to discuss reparations for thy shared sins, Princess Luna intoned. Filthy Rich nodded, standing up. Of course. 
Is Princess Twilight here as well? Princess Celestia shook her head, sipping her tea. No, she is in town coordinating funeral arrangements and arranging financial compensation for the loss Miss Hooves and her eldest daughter have suffered. Small comfort, I admit, but it's a start at least. In addition, we need to discuss present time for thy brat. Princess Luna said, scowling. Prison? Diamond Tiara almost shrieked. You bullied a girl to death, Princess Celestia said, her voice as cold as an arctic wind. But she killed herself. I didn't do it. I didn't touch her. I never, ever, ever laid a hoof on her. It was true. She had never struck or hit Dinky, never tripped her up or stolen her lunch money. She had only ever said things to her. And that is better? To take support in the suffering of another? It matters not whether that hoof did ever touch her. Thy words were lash enough. Luna, the voice. <laughs> Luna cleared her throat and continued at a lower volume and less archaic language. <clears throat> in my eyes, especially considering your apparent ongoing record of bullying, that makes you as low a scum as any villain we have ever vanquished. Filthy Rich nodded hesitantly. Diamond. Please go to your room and... and wait. I have to speak to their majesties about what happens next. But, Daddy... Diamond Tiara protested. Sweetheart, please. But, Daddy, this isn't fair! Thy brat doth seem to direct thee. Should it not be the other way around? Luna asked. Finally, at the end of his tether, Filthy Rich bellowed. Go to your room! Diamond Tiara... Her ears back scuttled away. She ran to her room, leaping onto her plush bed and crying. Why? Why was Why all this happening? happening? It, it isn't, isn't fair. fair. Daddy, Daddy didn't, didn't do, do anything, anything wrong. wrong. The princesses, princesses shouldn't be mean to him just because I... Just because I'm stupid crybaby Dinky couldn't take some harmless teasing. A brief image of Dinky flashed through her mind, sitting in the playground sandbox, Snivelling and mumbling about not meaning to get so sick that she needed to go to the hospital. Diamond Tiara shook the image away. She remembered Silver Spoon asking if they could go and play on the swings now, shooting a look at Dinky the Diamond Tiara didn't have a name for. Pity, maybe? Sympathy? Whatever it was, it made Diamond Tiara so mad that she had shoved Silver Spoon away and blurted the first thing that came into her head. You're, You're a burden. burden. No, no one, one wants you around. around. Even, Even the other blank flanks don't hang out with you. you. I bet I no one would even miss you if you suddenly disappeared. 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 Dinky's face had crumpled, and she had sat, looking stunned, as Diamond Tiara tossed her head and marched to the swing set. I didn't, I didn't mean, mean for her to kill herself. herself. I, didn't. I didn't. And Daddy, Daddy didn't even know, didn't know about, about that. that. Why, Why should he have to suffer for... For... She looked up at the ceiling, the idea that she was responsible for all this finally sinking in, finally breaking through her pride. For what I've done. Dear me, <laughs> have we finally reached an epiphany, said an inappropriately cheerful voice. Diamond Tiara yelped, looking around frantically. She spotted something that wasn't there before. A goofy-looking pink dragon amidst her pile of giant plush toys. It sported yellow, mismatched eyes and a cruel smirk. As she watched, the plush dragon transformed, turning into a slender, serpent-like figure with ill-assorted limbs, horns and wings. D discord Diamond Tiara whispered softly, recognizing the Draconicus. She wanted to snap a sharp remark at him, to prove she wasn't as scared of him as she had been when he terrorized the town with chaos before the elements of harmony turned him back into stone. He was supposed to be reformed now, yet she, like everyone else in town, knew full well what he was capable of, especially when he felt insulted. What are you doing here? She said after a long moment. Discord spun about the room like a corkscrew. Oh, good heavens, so many stuffed animals in here. You'd think it was Fluttershy's menagerie. Maybe I should bring a few to life. Might be fun. <laughs> He chortled at his own joke and turned back to Diamond Tiara. Why am I here? My, what a philosophical question. Why are any of us here, really? 
What is the meaning of life, the universe, and, well, everything? Diamond Tiara shook her head. I don't have time for this, she muttered, frustrated. From what I hear, you're going to have a lot of time. Discord pestered. Maybe even several years of it. Oh sure, you're just a child, and some will say you shouldn't be locked away. I would counter that by saying I myself was a mere stripling, back when sun, butt, and moon features locked me away in a stone prison. And all I did was tease and have fun with their little ponies too. <laughs> Diamond Tiara groaned, burying her head under a pillow. Leave me alone, okay? I have enough problems right now. Problems that you yourself have caused, my little pony. And really, you're being quite unprofessional about this. Diamond Tiara emerged to stare at him, confused. Professional? What are you talking about? Discord gestured, and a mortarboard appeared on his head. He took up a smug stance in midair and announced jovially, Firstly, remember Professor Discord's two rules of bullying. Number one, you are rubber and you are glue. Everything you do always comes back to you. Which, I guess, makes you a boomerang, too. <laughs> Meh, I suppose you have the right shaped head for it. And number two... Before Diamond Tiara could react, Discord grabbed her by the throat with his griffin claw and lifted her into the air. He snarled. There's always someone bigger. She shrieked and scrabbled at her own throat, choking. Discord dropped her, laughing like a loon. <laughs> oh, you should see the look on your face right now. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> he cackled. Diamond Tiara glared at him. So what? Are you here to bully me? She demanded. Pay me back for what happened to Dinky? Tell me I'm a terrible pony? You're a little late to get in that bad wagon. Discord scoffed. Oh, good heavens no. Bullying? I'm a good little draconic was fully reformed, he said, an angelically glowing halo appearing over his head. Well, mostly. <laughs> he pulled an invisible string on the halo, which blinked out of existence with the sound of a lamp turning off. Then what are you here for? To make you an offer. Discord floated around the room. One I don't think you can refuse. Diamond Tiara blinked. What do you mean? Dinky's suicide has created a great deal of chaos. This is the strongest I've felt in quite some time, Discord said, sitting down on the bed next to her. In fact, I feel strong enough to, say, rewind time so that you can correct the mistakes of the past. Diamond Tiara gasped. You... you can reset things? Make it so Dinky's alive and Daddy's business won't be hurt because of me? Discord nodded. I can send you back to the point in time when you started to focus your bullying on Dinky, instead of the Crusaders. All you have to do is not be so much of a jerk to her. I can do that! I can do that easy! Anything to keep Daddy from hurting! Discord shook his head. Egads! So you can care about some pony other than yourself! Diamond Tiara growled. I love my Daddy and Sylvie! And yet you never thought about how what you were doing would hurt them? Discord asked, smirking. Diamond Tiara froze. S sylvie too? Discord snickered. <laughs> oh yes, being your friend will have hurt her badly. Her parents will pull out all of their investments in barnyard bargains, and they'll have to move far away from Ponyville. After all, being associated with a family whose heir bullied a girl to death won't do at all if they want to get their precious little Sylvie into a good college. Not to mention the mental and emotional scars. She did see the dead body of one of her classmates today. A classmate she helped drive to suicide because she didn't do more to stop you. Come to think of it, all of your little classmates saw poor dead Dinky, didn't they? My, my, but there'll be some nightmares for Lulu to deal with over this. <laughs> Diamond Tiara staggered. More and more, she was starting to realize the depths of her mistake. Discord shook his head, sensing this as well. You're having so many revelations, and still all of them self-centered. You're concerned at your friend and your father and what they'll think about you after this. Don't you have a thought to spare about Derpy, or Sparkler, or Dinky herself? Aren't you even thinking about the empty bed in their house, the vacant spot at the dinner table, the smile they'll never see again? Diamond Yara winced, glaring at the Draconicus. He smirked. You know, he said in a conversational tone, floating into the air again and doing lazy loops around her bed. 
most creatures wouldn't be willing to give you a second chance. They just laugh in your face and tell you that you deserve everything that's coming to you. You really have been a terrible wee beastie. Then why are you willing to give me a second chance? Diamond Tiara asked, starting to tear up from frustration. Discord chuckled, gesturing and making some of Diamond Tiara's plush toys dance around the room. <laughs> well, as much as it pains me to admit it, Fluttershy's been a good influence on me. I felt it necessary to make this offer. Why? I could lie and say I'm bored, but, well, there's very little chaos to be gained from a lie like that. Telling you that I'm doing it because it's something Fluttershy would do if she could is so much better. You don't know whether I'm telling the truth or not! <laughs> he burst into raucous laughter that immediately stopped abruptly. Plus, this way Dinky stays alive, and you get a chance to better yourself. Diamond Tiara stared at her hooves. It sounded too good to be true. What's the catch? Discord smirked. Still not satisfied with my explanation? Fine. I want a favor. Diamond Tiara sighed. <sighs> of course. She muttered. The standard issue deal with these things. We'll be the only ones who remember what happened. I'll rewind time back to when you first started to be especially mean to Dinky. All you have to do to fix things is actually start being nice for once in your life. In time, I'll claim my favor. And you'll have no choice but to give it to me. Diamond Tiara stared at her door. Her father and the princesses were likely still in his office, discussing her fate. I don't really have a choice, do I? You've always had a choice, Diamond Tiara, Discord said, staring at her with interest. That's the beauty of chaos and life itself. Choices and consequences. Now's the time to start making the right ones. Diamond Tiara closed her eyes. After a long moment, she said, Deal. Discord snapped his lion's paw's fingers, and the world vanished in a flash of light. When Diamond Tiara's vision cleared, she found herself sitting in the stands at the Crystal Empire Stadium alongside Silver Spoon and their families, watching as the Cutie Mark Crusaders performed their routine to the thunderous cheers of the crowd. It's the past, Diamond Tiara realized, looking around. The quest for games, just before things started to go south. Stupid blank blanks! How come they get to perform at the Equestria Games and we don't? Silver Spoon muttered. Diamond Tiara remembered exactly what happened next and played out the part. Ah, uh, forget about those losers. Come on, let's go get some ice cream. Sounds good, Silver Spoon said, asking her mother for some money. Ooh, my tree! Awesome, Diamond Tiara said, chuckling. The two of them set out, chatting amiably. Diamond Tiara had to bite back the urge to talk about what was coming, not wanting to disrupt things. Finally, the turning point came. Dinky was outside a gift shop, a guard with a changeling detection lantern standing nearby and watching the filly with amusement. Dinky was writing in a card for her mother, drawing cute pictures as well. Derpy was inside the shop, buying souvenirs for her daughters. Diamond Tiara stared at Dinky, remembering what happened clearly. Dinky was still feeling the after-effects of the wagon accident that had landed her in hospital. Diamond Tiara had gone to taunt her, Silver Spoon trying to hold her back. She had made Dinky cry until the guard chased her off angrily, promising to report her to Dinky's mother. It was the start of the end for both of them. All you have to do is be nice for once. Discord said in Diamond Tiara's head. Oh, and buy mint chocolate, chocolate chip ice cream. It's better, it's better than, than strawberry. The tiara-wearing filly took a deep breath and started towards Dinky. Silver Spoon put a hoof on her shoulder. Um, tiara? <laughs> um, I don't think you want to pick on that filly. She was in that bad accident and she's more of a crybaby than the Crusaders are. Relax, Sylvie, Diamond Tiara said, smiling. I got it covered. She sauntered over to Dinky, who saw her and looked worried, holding her card up against herself defensively. The guard, sensing Dinky's sudden distress, stared at her suspiciously. Hey, Diamond Tiara said, smiling pleasantly. She had to bite back her reflex to say, blank flank. What you making? A, a card for mommy. The nice guy bought it for me. Dinky said. Huh, cool. 
Can I see? Reluctantly, Dinky held out the card, too afraid of Diamond Tiara to resist. Diamond Tiara looked it over, seeing the crude hearts and envelopes drawn all over it. Neat. Hey, doesn't your mom like muffins? Maybe draw some of those on there too. Derpy's love of the baked goods was well known in Ponyville. Dinky blinked and grinned, putting down her card and beginning to sketch again. The guard relaxed as Diamond Tiara walked back to Silver Spoon, who stared at her incredulously. Are you okay, Tiara? Diamond Tiara shrugged. Eh, I got no reason to be mad at her. Come on, I want some ice cream. Silver Spoon stared at her for a long moment, and then turned to the guard. Those changing detector lamps, they work automatically, right? The guard nodded. Yep. Anytime a changeling gets near, a green light comes out of this thing, casting a spell that cancels their disguise. Diamond Tiara laughed. <laughs> Gee, Sylvie, glad to know you think of me so highly, she said. Am I really that much of a jerk that maybe nice is weird? She thought frowning inwardly. Out loud, she said, Like you said, she was in the hospital not too long ago. It'd be like kicking a puppy. No fun at all, and you get the morose look that makes you feel like dirt. Come on, forget about her. I want some ice cream. Silver Spoon stared at her for another long moment. Um, sure thing? As they walked away, Diamond Tiara looked back. She watched Derpy come out of the shop with a bag full of presents. She hugged Dinky, and beamed with joy at the card, thanking the guard for buying it for Dinky. Okay, disaster averted. But I guess I should start being nice to every pony now instead of just Dinky. Well, I can work with that. It'll be a pain trying to be nice to those obnoxious blank flake crusaders, but I'll deal with it. I've got a second chance now, a chance not to ruin things, and I'll be damned if I'm going to waste it. That you use against me, you have knocked me off my feet again. Got me feeling like I'm nothing. You, with your voice like nails on a chalkboard, calling me out when I'm wounded. You, picking on the weaker man. Well, you can take me down with just one single blow. But you don't know, but you don't know. Someday I'll be living in a big old city, and all you're ever gonna be is mean. Someday I'll be big enough so you can't hit me, and all you're ever gonna be is mean. Why you gotta be? So mean. You with your switching sides and your walk by lies and your humiliation. You pointed out my flaws again as if I don't already see them. I walk with my head down trying to block you out cause I'll never impress you. I just wanna feel okay. Pushed around Somebody made you call But the cycle ends right now Cause you can't lead me down that road You don't know what you don't know Someday I'll be Living in a big old city And all you're ever gonna be is me Ooh, someday I'll be 
That was Too Far. It was written by Night Mysterio and read by Scribbler with special guest voice actors Ebony Tails, Dr. Wolf, Ice Gaze, Wish Lotus, Mary Medley, The Brony with the Bowtie, Muzz Quinsanity, Micah Franchi, Kate Bug, Magic Pen, It's Anna Chloe M, Ghostly Hamburger, Warrior Cat Cloud Tail One, Flutters Usagi Paws, Greg F. and Cole Petty. <sighs> right, thank you very much for listening. That might have seemed very odd to read off the cast list when the credits have just rolled, because as a rule, I don't do credits unless it has been a very long reading or it has been a really big cast. And this has been an incredibly big cast. Sixteen different voice actors, apart from myself. And, um, well, I, I don't know what to say next. I'm, I'm blanking a bit. Uh, this reading is out on a Tuesday when it should have been out of the weekend. And that is because this reading took far longer to put together than I expected. I had always intended to release it on anti-bullying week. Turns out apparently this is anti-bullying week and I got my dates wrong. So it was a good job I didn't release it last week because it would have been on the wrong week, and that would have somewhat detracted from the message behind it. I, uh, last year I did an anti-bullying fic called uh, Running From Myself, which was about Twilight and some childhood bullies that she had met again after years of not seeing them. And this year, this fic has been in production since May, I think, when the original story was in the feature box on film fiction. And... I've been gathering cast members since then, and people have been and people have been recording things since then. And through one thing or another, the cast has changed several times to the version that is in this final rendition. And I have to say thank you to each and every one of the cast members for participating in this, because um, anti-bullying week is—I wouldn't say it's close to my heart, but it's something that I very much believe in. Um, and for that, I have to reveal a little something about myself, that in, in real life I work in education. Um, and like my non-pony life, I, I work in education. And before that, uh, I my degree is in English language and education studies. And uh, because of that, I've been into many, many different schools. And I have seen firsthand the effects of bullying. I saw it myself as a child. I was not badly bullied myself, that was the thing. I was bullied in primary school, but then again I was a twit in primary school and too oblivious to know I was being bullied. But now I see bullying happen, and it is a very... It's a very odd duck to see both sides of this from my position, that I cannot in good conscience, just villainize anyone anymore. Working the job that I do, and seeing the things I've seen, and and living the life I have, I, uh, I see both sides of the story more often than not. And for that reason, Anti-Bullying Week is important to me, and I think it should be important to quite a lot of people, because it's raising awareness of all aspects of bullying, of the ramifications it can have of what bullying actually is, because it's, it's not just punching people. It's not just stealing lunch money. It's a great many things. And it, despite what it seems in this fic here, bullying doesn't just happen in school. Cyberbullying and online bullying are huge, huge problems. It's, you can say that, you know, 
give a million people keyboards and access to YouTube and Facebook and whatever, and a lot of them are going to take the anonymity of being behind that keyboard to be knobheads. But it, that only goes so far. Yes, you get people who who are horrible for the sake of being horrible, but you also get people who are horrible for reasons. And you have victims on both sides of bullying of times. And when you are a victim, it's hard to see that. And when you are a bully, it's hard to see the true effects of what you're doing. If you are venting, if you are just having a bad day, if you just make an off-the-cuff comment to someone just to to salve your own bad mood. And most people who do that, whom I see in the context of my work and whom I see online, don't realise the effect they're having. And I'm trying to play devil's advocate a bit here. Um, you know, floorboards. Yes, there are a quotient of people who would not care. But by the same token... I don't even know what point I'm making anymore. <laughs> I've wandered completely off topic, I feel, but it's hard. I find it hard to put into words this without saying certain the things that probably nobody wants to hear uh, and certain stories that I know from over the years. But uh, when I say I've seen both sides of bullying and when I say that I've seen some bullies who become bullies because it is part of a cycle. When I say I've seen bullies who are picking on others because it's the only way they can think to express themselves. When I've seen people who are too frightened to speak out against bullies or too frightened to say they are being bullied. And this is adults as well as, as teenagers and children. It makes me realise and it makes me think that bullying is something we almost find it socially acceptable to ignore to some degree. We make a big deal of bullying as a topic in children's literature and in children's programming, but we don't address it once we go past a certain point in life. Or at least I found that people don't address it very much. And, and bullying, it's not a small thing, nor should it be treated as such. It's not something that goes away when you don't have teen after your age anymore. It's not a thing that you can just forget about. And it's not a thing that you should sweep under the rug. So, in the spirit of anti-bullying week, I would say to people to raise awareness. And don't just raise a... Um, and by raise awareness, I don't just mean say, Ooh, mm, bullying, mm, it's bad, okay? Uh, that's not what I mean. I mean, have a good long think about what bullying is. Have a good long think about what bullying does. And have a good long think about what and who bullies are. Because one of the major things I have learned in the context of my job is that bullies don't often realise they're bullies. And that's really sad. Because... When they, when some of them do realise, it can be devastating. To, when things do go too far. <laughs> Title drop. That was not my intention with that sentence. I don't mean to trivialise the message I'm trying to get across. It is very, very easy to let things slide, to let things go, to not pay attention, because it's interrupting your day because it's something you don't want to have to deal with, because it makes you feel awkward, or you just don't like thinking about it. But we need to. But you need to. But I need to. But everybody needs to. Because, like I said, it doesn't go away. Do I think that we can eradicate bullying? No, I don't think so. No, I'm not that stupid. But do I think that every single person in the world could have a think, and perhaps make just a little bit of a difference? in their own lives or in someone else's, whether by changing their behaviour or noticing something that they weren't previously open to or just asking someone if they're okay, asking someone if stuff's okay at home, asking someone if they need to talk, 
and I, I, like I said, I mean victims and bullies, because often bullies are victims of a different type, then I think we should do it. And on that note, considering I've talked for ten minutes, I will shut up. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. I hope that you um, give the voice actors all the credit that is due. And I hope you have a think. Be lovely to each other, and good night, everybody. <laughs>